Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining today's session on networking informational interviews and connecting with alumni. And my name is Ida. I work at the Career Center and Jessica here is my supervisor there. Uh, she's going to be helping on the technical side of things with the session. And uh, just as we are all joining and maybe a couple of people might still be joining in, I wanted to ask you to just submit some of the expectations you have for today's session. So just as you have on the slide, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Mentimeter um, that uh, just put in, go to menti.com, put in the code, and we'll see some of the expectations you guys have for today's session. Yeah, uh, people are wondering about cold emailing and applying with not too much experience, uh, connecting with alumni. And one of the themes that is already coming up is kind of thinking through this, like reaching out to people and asking for a reference, which are some of the things we'll definitely talk about uh, at length today and how informational interviews relate to um, asking for references or not and what they can give you in terms of um, as related to your job search. Let's just give it one more minute um, if anyone else might be typing up uh, what they'd like to share and then we'll get on with the slide that I've prepared for you guys. All right, well, you're welcome to continue typing and I'll see those results later. We might even pull them up again uh, towards the Q&A in case some of the points were not addressed in the presentation and uh, you'd like me to come back to them. So let me just switch to my slides here. And the idea to ask you for your expectations before I actually tell you what is planned for you is really to, um, uh, to get an idea of what you have been expecting before um, coming into the session, before actually knowing what the agenda is. So, uh, well, uh, as for today's session, what um, we're hoping you will get out of it is uh, a more specific idea about the purpose of informational interviews and um, you will have identified uh, a few potential people uh, to contact for informational interviews or maybe just come up with ideas of how to search for the people um, and you might also have a better understanding of the informational interview content uh, and follow-up strategies and uh, we'll start by talking about informational interviews in general and what they are, kind of how to plan for them, how to approach scheduling informational interviews and preparing for the meeting, uh, reaching out to people, and then talk a little bit more about the alumni network and we'll have time, of course, for the Q&A. And I would just like to tell you that um, most of it, will, we will really focus on this idea of informational interviews that I've already mentioned a few times, uh, as this is one of the main ways you can connect with people uh, that you know or you don't know that could help you in your career exploration and later on potentially job search as well. So let's just talk about uh, informational interviews in general. And I'm realizing the slide is a bit busy, but let's just carefully go over some of the key points. Like in case some of you might wondering, some of you might've already had some experience with informational interviews, but uh, others might be wondering what it is. And really an informational interview is not part of the job um, application process directly, right? It's not the interview when your employer is interviewing you directly, uh, but rather it's an informal conversation with someone that you reach out to in the company, or it might be within your broader network. It might be someone you already know in a different capacity and you wanna to talk to them about their job uh, because they're working in a field that is interesting to you. Maybe you're wondering about the trajectory of their career development, how they started in their job. Um, and typically it happens over coffee or virtual or an in-person meeting. It's really up to you and the person you're reaching out to how to approach it. Now, why are informational interviews relevant? And how do these conversations, how do these in informal conversations really happen? Well, it's kind of up to you guys as potential job applicants. As you join this workshop, probably you're all thinking, uh, one way or another about your future job search uh, or current job search. So um, informational interviews are one of the things that gives you this opportunity to get to know different uh, aspects of working in a particular company or working in a particular role and really thinking about 
what what are some of the things that are not that evident that are not the things you will easily see in the uh, job description directly or and won't necessarily know from a specific company what it might involve in terms of working uh, culture or working environment and other aspects of the job that might not be that evident for, on the surface. So the main ideas and the goals for the informational interviews more formally are specifically understanding the career trajectories in a particular company because it might not always be clear how you transition from one job to the next and what the promotion opportunities might look like. What are the expected qualifications? Of course, every job description would have required qualifications, but it is only by talking to people in the field that you can really get a better sense of like, what are the profiles of people who do get selected into particular roles in particular companies? They might be more qualified than the job description or less qualified than the job description might imply to you as a new job applicant. So this is something that you could really find out by talking to people in the field and it's really important to reach out unless it's the people you already know that you think you could benefit from their experience typically if you're reaching out to people you haven't met before or you only know like through context of context talking to junior people is typically more useful as they would would have been in your shoes not that long ago they might be more inclined to want to help you and share their experience and their experience is also more relevant in terms of getting into their first job or having that position in the company that is more entry level with less uh, accumulated experience, etc. So um, finding out about hiring practices and the working environment, as I was mentioning, is another important aspect because this is something, of course, companies position themselves and advertise all of the perks and benefits that they offer because they want to attract talent. But there might be intangible things or things that are not widely advertised, but might be commonly known within circles of this company that you could also find out about, for example, certain expectations for interviewing. Maybe certain companies might have a preference for also finding out more about the life of candidates outside of like their interests and hobbies and how they might fit into the team more broadly rather than just like a technical, very specific technical interview. And those are the things that to be prepared for them, um, having these informational interviews and chatting with people could really be beneficial. Now, one thing that the informational interview is not, and I couldn't stress it enough, informational interview is not asking for a job. So this is something that often has confusion among students. And I wouldn't say that usually people don't have bad intentions, but really when you're reaching out to someone and asking them for something that you refer to as the informational interview, the assumption is that you want to learn about their experience working in the company. You wanna learn about their personal career goals and trajectories and kind of um, uh, insights, but not directly ask for a job. Of course, you're doing informational interviews because you have certain career objectives in mind, but really not directly asking for a job. And this is something that we encounter in our appointments with students sometimes is that you might ask a student, oh, have you done any informational interviews? And they might say, yes, when what they have in mind is that they reached out to people and asked for an internal reference for a specific job, right? That's not exactly an informational interview that will be an internal reference. Here, what we talk about really is these conversations you could have without a, a request for a reference for a specific job and typically done outside of the hiring cycle for a specific position. So you're really in a better place to ask people to share those informational interviews, uh, to share their time and experience in an informational interview when their team is not hiring, when you're not applying for that position. But we'll talk a little bit uh, more about the planning um, uh, in one of the later slides. And since you guys are all grad students, um, or at least most of you are grad students, and we all do research uh, to an extent, I just wanted to provide a few pointers here for the fact that informational interviews do work to basically help you get a better understanding of the career paths and uh, get positive feedback and get more ideas about the trajectories and job search and hiring practices uh, across the fields, which some of the uh, recent research uh, has also demonstrated. Um, so now if you're thinking about the informational interview strategy, um, there would be several stages involved in this. And of course, I want to acknowledge before getting into all of these details of planning and doing research, job search is overwhelming. 
uh, figuring out what you want to do with your life, how to get a job in something that you want to do and are passionate about is a big, big process. And it involves a lot of things. And it might seem a little bit overwhelming when you think about all of these things um, that you have to do. And maybe now you might be feeling like, oh, I also have to schedule these informational interviews. When am I going to get time to do that? But really think of this as a complementary, as a supporting strategy to your goals. So you can do as much of it as you can. And once you find yourself, if you're already applying for jobs now and you find yourself, well, maybe some things are not working, this could be an alternative thing, not an alternative, but an additional thing you could explore that maybe will help you strengthen your position as a job candidate. And we will talk about uh, how this could be relevant. Um, on the other hand, maybe you're not looking for a job just yet. And that might be a perfect time to think about informational interviews and then maybe allocate a little bit of time to it so that you can explore different career paths and trajectories and just think about into the future what you might be interested in doing uh, later and not stress about it during the, the job application process when other things will be taking up most of your time. So when you think of informational interviews, um, you think about doing your research and prepping well for the interviews. That will involve identifying people to talk to, but also being ready for the conversation once those conversations are scheduled. Um, the informational interview is not you being interviewed, but rather you're interviewing someone else. So you really think of yourself as a facilitator of that conversation, right? You come prepared with questions. You're ready to be engaged and involved in the conversation, and you want to be um present and prepared and uh, all of those things and also the follow-up strategies that are just as important that we'll talk about at a later slide in more detail so let's think about planning so a successful informational interview will consist of several stages and like i said try not to be overwhelmed we are really trying to present as much information here as possible that is relevant to this process and you will take some things out of it some of you might have had, might have done some informational interviews, others not. So maybe you will be improving some of the strategies you've used or just kind of thinking about what is the first step you could take in this journey of exploring your career path and opportunities uh, with professionals in the field. So, of course, the first thing would be identifying people, right? Who do you want to reach out to and why and what are the things that they could be contributing to your experience uh, and why you're interested in speaking with someone specific. Um, that does not involve very extensive research and we'll talk about identifying like employers of interest and people to talk to. I apologize, one second. <laughs> uh, sorry about the noise. Um, yes, so you will be thinking about the people you want to reach out to and scheduling the interview with them as the next stage. And here also one thing to keep in mind is that there will be times where uh, some of the people might not be getting back to you and it's not on you. It's not about you and them not wanting to talk. Sometimes people are busy. So in reaching out to people, you really want to plan to reach out to more people than uh, you actually in the end will end up having informational interviews with. So once some of the things have been scheduled and you have some of those coffee chats or virtual Zoom meetings, uh, you will, it will be on you to do more in-depth research uh, and thinking about what is the company and how you can prepare best for the conversation you will be having. And we'll have a discussion about that in more detail as well. Um, and finally, as I was mentioning, following up is equally important that the informational interview is not just about the interview itself. It's really part of a broader strategy of you building your network, finding the people who might be your mentors or people who might help you in your career exploration and job search in the future. So following up is something that enables you to start building that relationship. And doesn't you follow up with a basic note to everyone, but maybe some of those informational interviews might grow into longer term professional connections, whereas others might not. And one thing I like to suggest when I talk to the students about planning uh, is this kind of smart planning or setting smart objectives. What I mean here is thinking about now, like, which also hopefully can help you be a little bit less overwhelmed with the process, is not only um, are there many aspects to the job search process, but also like within our life, within our graduate school experience, we have a lot of competing priorities, of course. So one thing I suggest is set 
specific goals. If informational interviews is something you want to try, and hopefully you do, as that is sort of something that we're trying to showcase how this is relevant to your job search and career development in the long term, like try to set specific uh, and achievable objectives for your uh, job search broadly, but also specifically pursuing informational interviews. It's just one of the many things you could be doing. So maybe you decide that for the next month or two, you will be reaching out to a few people every week, or maybe at least one person a week, try to schedule something and don't forget to include following up with these people and actually following through and scheduling the interview once they get back to you uh, as part of your strategy. And you will see that that might not be as intimidating as it is. For example, with this slide, you will see a sample request. It could be very short. You don't need to write an essay about yourself and why you're interested in this person. That initial point of contact, there is like a Goldilock amount to write a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what you want to learn from them and just ask them for the informational interview. As I already mentioned, some people might or might not get back to you. Uh, some people will definitely get back to you if you send a bunch of informational interview requests that are following these kind of best practices. And they will result in having these appointments with people who might be quite interesting and hopefully uh, who you could learn a lot from. So um, you can read this request, but it's basically just introducing yourself that you did a, you're a student in a specific program at UCSD, what, what is the field of work that you're interested in, and uh, what you'd like to learn from the person you are applying to, <coughs> you're requesting to meet with. And mentioning your availability is optional. It might ease up the process for your potential uh, contact to schedule it straight away. So this is a suggestion. And uh, two additional things here that you might consider mentioning that also depends on the means how you reach out to people, because if you reach out through LinkedIn, there will be a word count limit on, uh, on a message to the new connection. If you're reaching out over email, of course, it's a little bit more flexible, but it's always a good idea to mention if someone suggested you talk to this person. So if you know someone in common that suggested you talk to them, or that's how you found out about this person or this company, it's always good to mention that because that's an additional uh, point of reference for the person you're reaching out to. They're like, oh, this person knows this friend of mine or this colleague of mine or the former colleague. And it might be also make them more likely to reply to you. Similarly, if you consider adding some points about something you have in common, like maybe you both went to UCSD. So then you could start with like, oh, like dear such and such, I'm a fellow UCSD uh, student or alumni uh, reaching out to you. Like we both did this program. Just again, to what you want with this request is really for it to be a little bit personal, but not overwhelming to read tons of personal details or uh, your questions or things like this. But at the same time, put yourself in the shoes of the person you're reaching out to. This is you maybe three, four, five, uh, ten years down the road. You might be working somewhere, industry, government, academia, wherever you are. And you might start getting these requests and uh, people want to talk to you about your career path. Now, think about it. If you get a request that is like more relatable to you, maybe the person is from the same place you're from, did the same program, you're probably going to be a little bit more likely to reply to them than someone who just said, oh, I want to talk to you. Are you valuable? Right. So just put themselves in their shoes. Try to make it personal, but not overwhelming. And it's really, like I said, it's just a few sentences and some people would not reply. Don't take it personally. Others will. And you might have conversations that you never expected to have. So there's always something to look forward to. Now, let's imagine you already reached out and you have some of them scheduled. So now what comes, what is important is how to have that conversation. So like, what are the things that are important for the interview to be successful? And this is something that you want to plan for. This is really where your research uh, your additional research and preparation for the interview could be useful. Uh, you want to check the LinkedIn profile or other online information that might be available about the person, uh, which school they went to. Don't be like, there's no stalking expected. The LinkedIn profiles are public, of course. So some of the things that you might find that are publicly available could be nice conversation starters, you know, um, let's say they didn't go to UCSD, like that's one thing you could connect over, but you could say, oh, I know you went to such and such school. How was the transitioning from that to your job, et cetera, things like this. So you also wanna explore 
things about the company that you can find. So things like uh, what are some of the current projects or initiatives that the company is taking, or maybe you can even find inf- uh, more specific information about the team that the person you have an <clears throat> interview with is working on. Um, those things might be more or less difficult to find depending on how public the company is about their projects, depending on how much you already know about this company. So don't be afraid if you couldn't find a lot of information about that. Just make sure you do do your research. You don't want to ask questions that you could have found the information on like that main web page of the company because that would indicate that maybe you did not um take your time to prepare and think through what you're hoping to do in the interview. And now before we actually discuss some sample questions, just the one of the big pieces of advice is that you always want to ask open-ended questions whenever you're asking someone, right? Um, Instead of asking how many jobs did you apply for, uh, which is a, could be a single word answer or was it difficult to find a job? You could be talking more broadly about, Uh, How did you begin your career in this company? And before we get into specific questions, I just wanted to briefly show you a video, a section of a video, which is a TED talk, which is literally called How to Have a Better Conversation. So I'm just going to pull up a section of it. And I think I might need to reshare my screen so you guys can see the video as well. Uh, if okay, I hope you can see the video. So I'm just gonna play this section of it that gives you some advice about how to have a better conversation in a more general context, but we will apply this to the context of informational interviews. And we do the exact same thing. We're sitting there having a conversation with someone and then we remember that time that we met Hugh Jackman in a coffee shop. (laughs) And we stop listening. Stories and ideas are gonna come to you. You need to let them come and let them go. Okay, it seems that the sound is not ideal. So let's just uh, continue discussion. Maybe you heard part of it. Um, Sorry, let's just go back to the presentation. All right, can you just hear me talking now? Any thumbs up or in the chat? Yes, perfect. Thank you, Oscar. Okay, so I apologize for the technical difficulty. I, um, it's a talk you can find online. You don't even need the link if you Google how to have a better conversation TED talk. Uh, you can listen to the 10 minutes of it. I would say it's worth a listen. I actually came up with, I thought of sharing a piece of, you, uh, of it with you today because I still remember Um, Some of the things I learned from it, having watched it quite a few years ago, actually. So, um, yeah, you can always go back to it. It's 10 minutes. Listen to it after the talk or whenever you find time. So let's just continue our discussion about uh, the informational interviews more specifically so that we don't uh, lose our time on the technical difficulties. Uh, So now you might or might not have heard, but some of the things that I started mentioning and that were also mentioned in the talk are asking open-ended questions and being present for the conversation, listening, thinking about what you can learn from this person. Everyone that uh, is not you knows something that you don't know. So there's always a little something you can learn and think of this informational interviews as an opportunity to learn something new. So some of the questions that you could be asking that are open-ended and really get the person chatting about their experience and giving you those insights that you might not even foresee what are the specific things that might be relevant to your path are, how did you start your career after university? Or what helped them succeed in the job search? How they ended up working in a particular company or in a particular role, maybe their qualifications were or were not relevant. So that process could be really illuminating for you as well. 
uh, what they find rewarding in their work or what is the most surprising thing they found in the work where the latter question could both lead them to talk about something nice, surprising and interesting or pleasant, but at the same time might also be an opening for them to talk about some of the issues they might be having. They might or might not want to share negative things about their work or their perception of the company, but you could create that space for them to share because that would also be valuable for you to know as a potential uh, person working either at this company or in a similar role in a different company um, and things like this. One important thing here is that this is the informational interview of the person you reached out to. So mostly you want them to talk. You want them to share their experience. This is the reason they agreed uh, to meet with you. It's up to them if they end up asking you more personal questions as well. Feel free to share as much as you want. But you need to be prepared with the questions um, and uh, some of the things you would like to use to guide this conversation um, as so that it flows and because they decided to meet with you, of course, they want to share something, but it's also new to be able to facilitate that conversation. Uh, one of the things you could be doing at the very end is also asking them for a suggestion if they can think of anyone that you should talk to based on the conversation you've had. So they might suggest someone who is in a similar thing that you are interested in, um, etc. And uh, that is something that could lead you to the next informational interview or making another important connection uh, with someone that might help you, uh, if not get a job, but at least identify the jobs you're interested in and what you might be might want to do with your career. Uh, there's a link to the additional uh, questions for informational interviews if you kind of are struggling and want to have some at the back of your mind, uh, just in case maybe the person is not as chatty as you were hoping them to be. But also, as one of the things that was also mentioned, was supposed to be mentioned in the video is you want to be present and you want to participate in this conversation, in this informational interview. And sometimes don't try to just go through the list of questions you have prepared, but maybe they're telling you something interesting that is related to another thing you wanted to learn more about and just to let the conversation flow and take it to the direction that the person is taking it to. And of course, this is a skill and it might be intimidating to do it the first time or the first couple of times. But at the end of the day, you're having a coffee or having a short virtual Zoom chat uh, with someone and uh, it's not going to go poorly. You know, maybe you don't have a lot of things to talk about. You can finish early. Or maybe if you don't have a lot of um, job things that come up, you will still be able to get to know them and learn something from them. There is always an opportunity to learn something from someone you haven't met before. Now, after the interview is done, don't underestimate the value of a thank you note. The general idea for everything you do that is related to uh, career development and job search uh, in general, or more specifically applying for specific jobs, always follow up. Show that you're a person who cares to thank someone for the time that they've invested in you, whether that's an informational interview or a job application and a regular interview. But specifically in the informational interview context, people are giving you their time, sharing their insights, sharing their experiences, opening up, making it work to meet you virtually or in person. So end it on time to show appreciation of the time during the interview and then follow up, sending them a thank you note. And beyond just saying a very basic, oh, thank you for making time, bye. Um, but you could mention like, you know, like that you were listening, you know, mention some of the things that some of the suggestions they made, you know, thank you for um, letting me know about this event or letting me know about these opportunities that I would like to explore. You could mention some of the next steps in building your career path that you have started to think about based on your conversation. And that will make the person feel that they really were able to help you somehow. And maybe, you know, next time someone else reaches out to them for an informational interview, they will also say yes. Um, and then this, of course, depends on the nature of the conversation that happened, but also you could stay in touch and keep sending updates. Of course, you might not do it with this, every informational interview that you've done, but maybe with some of them that you felt a stronger connection with, you could really follow up and tell them, oh, you know, I, I've started applying for jobs and I got this interesting position, or maybe you will end up becoming their colleague in the future. You never know. So it's nice to stay in touch and uh, keep them updated. That might help you build that professional network where it's not the friends that you hang out with all the time, but it's someone you every once in a while 
keep updated about the, uh, your life. And they might, in response, also tell you something about their career trajectory. And you might continue learning things about how working in the field of your interest is like. So now I've been talking for a long time. <laughs> and the video didn't even substitute my voice for all that long. So what I propose we do right now is I would like to encourage you to take a few minutes, think about an informational interview you've had in the past, or if you haven't had, if you've never had an informational interview, think about what you would like to get out of an, an interview that you might do next. So think about what was the outcome of the conversation for you or what you would like the outcome to be. And how could you nurture the relationship with your contact going forward after the interview? So let's just take a few minutes here uh, to give you a chance to gather your thoughts and I'll silence myself. And uh, hopefully some of you would be open to sharing something on the chat for the rest of us. Uh, just as some of you might still be collecting ideas, I guess I could tell you an example of a friend who was applying for a job um, oh, who was applying for jobs generally, but then was interested in kind of exploring a different field. And interestingly for her, as, as I was mentioning before, it wasn't so much, um, like you don't need, you don't focus on an opportunity to get a job during the interview. So you will really reach out to someone to talk about their experience. And that's kind of very similar to all the things we've talked about. She reached out to the, a few people on LinkedIn who work in consulting in that department that was doing work that was relevant to her interest. And uh, one of those conversations, towards the end of the conversation, the person said, oh, we will be hiring for this position. I'll send you the job description and I'll refer you internally. But that was not the thing that she was asking for. She, uh, she was really asking about the experience and the person told her, what were like the educational credentials that were necessary or what were some of the previous relevant internship experience or working experience or research uh, that was relevant to this field of consulting. And my friend was thinking about what are the things she might be doing to kind of uh, build that experience. But the informational interview did not just result in uh, like finding out more about the job, which she did uh, and got some ideas, but even resulted in a reference um, and like a, not just a reference, but also like finding out about a job that she might not have known would be posted otherwise. And in terms of nurturing the relationship going forward, in that case, well, they beca became colleagues <laughs> a few weeks or maybe a month or two later. So uh, that is already building a relationship with a colleague. But in other cases, from uh, her experience and all of other informational interviews, from uh, a couple of the things I've done, I just am more focused on academic work. So this might be a little bit less relevant to the industry informational interviews. But it's really just every once in a while sending them an update, you know, how they're doing um, and letting them know that you might be finishing grad school now, applying for jobs and you're exploring these career paths or uh, just letting them know that you already have applied for jobs, you got an offer and you'll be starting to work at this company and thanking them for the insights that they gave you. So things like this. Um, I wonder if anyone might want to post on the chat something that might be relevant to their experience. I'll just give it a few more seconds. And if not, we'll continue to the next um, couple of slides that I have uh, for us to discuss. All right, let's continue. If anyone still wants to share, please do feel free to post on the chat we can discuss or you can just uh, share it with others uh, for them to see. Um, so as we were talking, you not every informational interview is going to be different. It really depends on the person. It really depends on um, their, not just their personality, also like their willingness to engage in this informational interview. And after a meeting, you could reflect and think, was the person a grump who didn't really want to be there, even though they agreed to the informational interview? Um, was the person doing it out of obligation? So, you know, they were present and on time and they were answering your questions. Um, they gave you the information that you asked for, but really kind of doing, maybe not so much the bare minimum, but just kind of like doing it out of obligation. You don't think that they might be interested in really supporting you further beyond this meeting. It might be just because they're busy. It might be because they're not the kind of person. There might could be a variety of reasons for that. Um, finally, some of your informational interviews will hopefully be with someone who you could identify as a booster. 
someone who will could become your advocate and um, maybe they will provide you a reference but it goes beyond a reference really giving you useful advice giving you tips for what to do in your job applications even if you're not working in a specific company or maybe this company is not hiring that they're working for currently they might continue um, interacting with you in the future as you send them follow-up emails or messages they would also uh, follow up with you on some of the things that are going on in your life and give you tips otherwise so those people that you feel you connect with for one reason or another uh, you would really you could really think about uh, them as like some of these interactions that you might want to invest a little bit more effort into in, in the follow-up, sharing that you felt like you connected well and thanking them for the inputs that they put, insights that they provided. Uh, but then again, just a brief reminder, everyone does deserve a thank you note. So do um, send a quick follow-up at least to everyone you've had an, in, an informational interview with and then again you could send slightly longer messages or uh, more personalized ones to those that you feel like might be your advocates and then other than the type of person you talk to some of you might be thinking okay so there are all these things about the informational interview but where do i start or how do i even think about who to talk to and there are two things we'll talk about so thinking about potential employers and thinking about how to expand your network through through networks that you're already a part of for example ucsd so first in thinking about the employers there's this uh, one of these kind of specific techniques some of you might like a specific tip or trick how to approach this and maybe make a list is the so-called lamp list so the lamp list is a list of employers where you identify whether any given employer has alumni of your university, UCSD in this case, working for them, maybe also your previous university if you're doing a second degree or your undergrad, for example, uh, university as well being referenced. Uh, motivation, uh, your motivation about your interest in working in this company and whether or not they have postings. It doesn't have to be specifically the number of postings they have currently, but just in general, you know, is the company hiring a lot of people right now or do they barely have anything? And you can just use one of those uh, major job aggregating sites, Indeed or LinkedIn, just to get an idea of how actively any given company might be hiring. Um, the idea here would be that if you decide to use this as one of the techniques for your job search and career development, just try not to not to get overwhelmed with making the list, right? The making the list is not the final goal. The final goal is getting you to consider different career options that you have. And so don't spend more than an hour maybe or so uh, making the list. Really try to come up with things like a couple of employers, maybe up to 10 might come just from the top of your Head. like you already know like oh these are some of my dream employers these are some of the places i know that my friends or former students from my program are working at these are some of the companies i just know that hire people in this position i might not or might not want to work for them as much so maybe your motivation might be a little lower there but just try to come up with a list just to get yourself started on something and it might also give you a nice feeling of like having done something tangible for your job search and then you, you can use this as a guide, not just for applying for jobs, but also for informational interviews, right? Some of these companies might not have current postings, but this is a great opportunity to reach out to someone junior working in a role that is similar to what you'd be interested in and reach out for an informational interview and try to find out uh, about their experience working in the company. And you might find out that, well, maybe, yeah, this really is what you expected. And you might get some insights about how to more successfully apply for jobs there when an opportunity comes up, or maybe, if the person you're getting an interview with uh, enjoys the conversation with you, they might even let you know when a position opens up that they think you could be a good match for. Um, and so this is just something tangible you could do, which would not be hopefully too overwhelming, uh, but also get you started and uh, do have a specific thing to work on. Now, of course, these informational interviews are a part of expanding your network, as I mentioned. And uh, there are a few things you could be thinking about using. Of course, one of the biggest networks that you're already all a part of is the UCSD students and alumni. And there is this, I just wanted to briefly show you because I think this is something that we often underestimate in uh, like how accessible something might be as a tool. So I just want to show you and walk you through. I'm just going to reshare the screen to another screen here. Uh, 
Um, okay, so you should be, yes, you should be able to see LinkedIn. So if you just go and Google LinkedIn UCSD, uh, a page will come up and this will be the page that says the official LinkedIn account of UC San Diego. And as you scroll through it, there's not that much, but look here, there is alumni section. So when you go to the alumni section, this will be obviously people who are on LinkedIn, right? Not the entire universe of everyone who graduated from UCSD, but you will get some like general statistics, but you can also look for alumni by title or specific company. For instance, let's say you really wanted to work at Disney. Let's look here. There are people who come up and you can find out what they're studying and why this came up. For example, someone is working in Disney Strategic Finance uh, that has a UCSD connection. There are other people that come up, a web app engineer probably there, and you might even see that you have some shared connections with them. So it might even be easier to reach out to these people. And then you can, of course, open their profiles and see what they do, see if they have profiles similar to you, and whether or not you might want to have an informational interview with them or connect them and ask for other tips and feedback. So this is just one of the tools that I wanted to show you. And then of course, uh, there are also UCSD alumni networks that you can tap into more directly. And here's a link to the alumni clubs. It will just show up on a website in a second. Yes, now you can see my presentation again. So you can find a club of UCSD alumni in your region, wherever you are in the US, and there's some international ones as well. And there's also this uh, platform that we feel like might be underutilized is Tritons Connect. There are lots of people that you see, uh, who are from UCSD, alumni, students, staff, and faculty, and you can get matched with a mentor. You can post um, uh, uh, and apply for job opportunities there. So there are all these like things you could be doing to expand your network if you feel like it. You just got to put yourself out there a little bit. And finally, this is just before we kind of start wrapping up. I wanted to spend a few minutes like all of your grads, well, most of you at least would be grad students. And uh, um, I, uh, one of the things to think, uh, one of the things to think about is that as we think about these informational interviews, you know, I've been talking a lot about companies, people working in your role, etc. But some of you might be considering both academia and non-academic paths. And informational interviews are not completely irrelevant to those of you who might want to stay in academia, whether you're master's students thinking of applying to the PhD programs or whether you are PhD students who are thinking, well, maybe you want to go both um, to the academic job market, but also look for some industry or government or other outside options. Um, informational interviews could be relevant here too. As a master's student, you could be uh, trying to reach out to other students, senior students, PhD students, your TAs, to ask them about their PhD applications. You know, if you want to get into a PhD program, it's about your portfolio, but it's also about you knowing how the things are in the field. What are the things that are important in your application? What are some of the programs you might or might not know about? How to make connection with potential supervisors if that's something that is common in your field? And as a PhD student, you could also be, uh, who is interested in academic career, you could also be utilizing this concept of informational interviews, even though we don't really call them that, but just like chatting with people informally, people who are in positions where, which are relevant to you and thinking about former students of your supervisor or committee members that already have gotten faculty positions, right? They might be people who, who are good points of contact because they're not your competition in the academic job market that could be quite sensitive, um, especially if you consider your classmates or people applying in the same year. Um, and uh, they might be sharing insights. And even if they feel a connection that is strong enough to you, they might even share their academic job market application. And that could be quite invaluable for your uh, future job applications. Uh, talking to recent graduates from your department who worked on similar topics or subfields, could also be another thing. And it's pretty easy, you know, like you're at UCSD right now, checking out who are the people that graduated recently, sending them a quick email um, and saying, you know, I'm also from the same department. I know you graduated, got a job recently. I'd love to uh, find out a little bit more about your job market experience. And uh, they might or might not say yes, uh, they likely will. It, a lot of departments have a stronger sense of community to someone who is also part of that department. 
And uh, also recent graduates in a similar field, um, maybe not at, not just at UCSD, but at other universities who might share something in your background. Uh, why am I mentioning this? So this is previous training or personal background. The reason I brought up this point is because you might know about the trends for equity and diversity in academia, in different fields. Some fields are trying to hire more minorities. Some fields are trying to hire more women. And knowing from the experience of someone who might be more similar to you in the sense of training or what you look like or what you're interested in, what you come across as, um, might be also valuable to learn about what was their job market experience because this will be relevant to you even though you didn't go to the same university. So these are some of the suggestions and a plug for kind of the role that informational interviews could also help you in advancing your academic uh, career and academic path. And just for a minute, we won't spend three minutes on this, just like a minute or two, but if you don't mind, some of you might still have Minty open. Uh, just before we get into the questions, we'll have a few minutes for them. Uh, if you don't mind going to Minty and just sharing um, some of your takeaways from today's session, you can also do it on the Zoom chat. It's up to you. Um, just Minty allows you to do it uh, anonymously if you'd like. And uh, maybe you want to share what is your next step in exploring some of those opportunities through informational interviews. Let's just give it a minute and we'll spend some time talking about your questions if you have any left. All right, well, maybe some of you are still typing it uh, and would like to share, but um, let's just leave this space open for your guys' questions if you still have any. There were some things about cold emailing and references that you guys mentioned you were hoping to learn out of the session. If you all have follow-up questions on this based on what we covered today, please post them on the chat or just uh, unmute yourself and speak up. I'd be happy to address them in the couple of minutes that we have remaining. If there are no questions, um, thank you. Thank you, Oscar, let me just see. Okay, you now know more about the potential informational interviews to increase your network and shape your career. And learning from the former students making a lamp list. Yes, thank you for sharing, Oscar. This sounds great. Happy it was helpful. I guess, in case there are no further questions, let's just wrap up here to keep everything on schedule and let you guys get to your next commitment. So thank you all for joining today. It was great to have this workshop and hopefully uh, you learned something and found useful things. Uh, remember that you can always uh, schedule an appointment with us at the Career Center. It is always a resource that is there for you. Um, and I'm just trying to provide a link to some other resources that I mentioned related to informational interviews. But yes, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we can discuss your informational interviews or anything else related to job search and one-on-one -on -one appointments. And you can also find more information about our other events that will be held. Uh, thank you all guys for coming and that will be it for today.